You're probably wondering, what happened to Benzin on a budget? Me too. Me too. Now, I may have fallen victim to the classic car guy scenario of buying a project during another project. But, I promised myself I would not be one of those YouTubers that bought a car and ended up not following through on what they originally planned. Tavares. My name is Tavares. With that said, welcome back to Benzin on a Budget, episode eight. All right, you guys, Benzin on a Budget, part eight. It's actually happening. About to pull this thing into the garage, get this ripped off, start it up. See if we can get this engine out of here today with the transmission as well. Now that this thing's done, you know, good to go. This, it's a waiting, it's a waiting return. This takes place first though. Let me get the covers off, see if we can get this thing fired up. There she is, and uh, I wouldn't qualify it as all her glory, but you know, <laughs> it's not bad. Got a little wet underneath, but much better than the last time when I didn't have the two covers on it. Really excited to see these wheels on the 190. I think they'll look good. And 17s so will be good for tires. So let's see what we got in here. I'm guessing, yes, it's gonna be moldy, of course. Because there's water coming in from all kinds of places. Mike and Maze are hanging out in the garage. Getting things prepped before we slide it in there. Let's see if we can get this thing open. I think there's a trick to it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. Covered all this up. Let's hope it stayed uh, somewhat waterproof for the ECU's sake. All right, things appear to have stayed pretty dry besides some water I dropped off the bags when I was pulling them off. But uh, if you remember our whole wiring dilemma here, none of this ended up being the problem, which I wish I left it alone, but it's okay. We're gonna kind of redo the harness anyways. But uh, if you guys followed along in the series, we couldn't get this thing started, couldn't figure it out, all kinds of stuff we tried, and it ended up being the ECU was bad. It had a MOSFET that was bad inside for one of the coils, and uh, or coil packs, I should say, and uh, wouldn't start or it wouldn't, wouldn't run on all four cylinders but we got it working now uh, so hopefully with my janky straight to power um, ECU we'll be able to get this thing to turn over again Let's see if we got any zap left in the battery Ooh, that's not looking good maybe not might have to charge that thing for a bit all right we got cluster but not much cluster got real unhappy last time when we let the Water get into the interior. Oh, this thing might be dead, dead battery. Oh yeah, we need to charge this thing. All right guys, don't let your uh, project cars sit in the cold. Seems like a abandoned, possessed electronics right now, but I think it's maybe happy enough to start right now. It finally didn't glitch, so let's see what it's got. are definitely not happy. No, it sounds good. It's just really angry. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's angry, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, try to get this thing in the garage. Six 
eight inches more. Just a little bit more to clear the garage door. That's good. Let's go get the... Got no power steering. Yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> Alright guys, our first drive. <laughs> um, it's uh, not red anymore. Yeah, it was because this was unlocked. Oh. Yeah, I didn't realize I had the steering wheel unlocked, so it makes it turn red. Um, I lost the numbers last time when uh, I let water get into it, so rest in peace to this cluster. Uh, or at least just a little screen that can be replaced. We're not going to be reusing this anyways. I have a C32 one up on the wall there that I might use if we do end up doing a 203 cluster. Otherwise, I'll just use a 190. But yeah, it ships good. Drives good besides having no power steering. So let's get to it. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, we're actually here all this time later. It's finally in the garage. This was supposed to happen a while ago, but then the red car happened, so. <laughs> but we're back to it at least. Um, we're gonna come up with a game plan, what we're gonna try, and we'll keep you guys posted. Try to get underneath, unbolt the trans and all that stuff. See what we can do to get this out of here, maybe as one unit. All right guys, uh, fourth project on the race ramps. Bye bye! <laughs> we just got the front, um, we're just, I think we're gonna try to pull the tranny first and get that out of the way. I will end up pulling it off anyways, even if we pulled it off as one unit, because gotta inspect the clutch, see what that looks like. Hello, bye bye. Hello, bye bye. Um, so, see what we see underneath and uh, go from there. <clears throat> yeah. The enemy wrenches. <laughs> what do we got left down here? The exhaust is off at least. Well, kind of, yeah. Um, bolt. Exhaust manifold at least. Gotta get this cover Take off. Keys off. Drive shaft. Alright, shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. We've, we done, we've done this once or twice. Yeah. Alright, guys, we're working our way down here. Trying to get the uh, transmission bolts off. Uh, a little bit different with the four cylinder, but overall similar. Um, then we're gonna try to get the drive shaft off. I'm gonna go drain out. Drain out the coolant. Do all the little stuff as much as I can. So once we move on to this side, it'll be a little easier. I gotta figure out what to do uh, with the intercooler piping for the supercharger. Um, and what is gonna need to come off to be able to lift the engine out. So try to figure that out as well. Alright guys, and for those that don't know, Mercedes radiators all have this little drain tube that you hook on. Um, and then release the peacock in it. Takes fluid out. Doesn't look too bad. Who knows what it is? Old, whatever. Green cool. Yeah. Oh. Get it out of here. Alright guys, we are uh, making headway on the transmission. Got the drive shaft out. Had to lift up the rear to spin the rear wheels. All right guys, switching over to this camera, GoPro died, but shifter is out. Got the drive shaft out, uh, GoPro was dying right when I was showing you guys that. We are sitting with the transmission lowered down. How many bolts you got left? Uh, two, I think. Okay. So, top ones. Uh, okay, the other side, I don't know how many are on. Very top. There's two over here I can feel. <clears throat> we got the uh, clutch line undone as well. So, this thing's close, just gotta get these last few bolts. <clears throat> yeah, it loosened up top. What's that? It loosened up top. Is it cracking this up on top? Yeah. Oops. Uh, yeah, 
should be good. Ready? Yeah. All right, guys. Working is out. GoPro would be better to see all that, but anyways, this is out. I'm gonna need some cleaning, but besides that, should be okay. All right, guys. View of the clutch right there. Flywheel is definitely different than the uh, V6 style ones. We'll take a look at it once we got everything off. All right, guys, we're moving up top now. Everything's undone underneath. Uh, Micah did the engine bolts, and I did the wiring harness, fuel line. Just got the core support off, and gonna try to figure out what I need to undo to uh, separate this thing from the intercooler. All right, guys, we were trying to figure out how to get the uh, intercooler off. Not really sure about it, to be honest. Probably something simple, but I'll have to watch a YouTube video, but everything is free from the front of the motor. Um, it's just a couple hoses got to get detached and this thing should be ready to lift out of here So we're just gonna do that instead drop it back down on the floor Hook on our anchor points one here one in the back there and uh, try to lift this thing out
pretty wide in the front for a, like all the assembly on it. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Trying to change it up quite a bit of that intake system. Well, it's out. There you go. <laughs> All right guys, well there it is. Finally out of its cubby. And uh, to be honest, things are looking okay on it. I mean, it's very dirty. Mostly just from sitting around, it has all that classic Mercedes aluminum corrosion, or just aluminum corrosion when it sits out like that, but that can all be washed off. Um, I'm pretty sure, guys, this is an aftermarket supercharger pulley, because there's no clutch to be found on this, and you can tell it's like some custom welded uh, bit and that looks very familiar from the ones that I've found on eBay. I believe from a seller over in UK So that is awesome something I was gonna do uh, regardless I also have something very cool on this end of things uh, that you guys will see later on in another episode of the series uh, but Yeah for what we got in the back here. I'll have to pull this apart. See how everything looks most likely I'll end up doing a clutch um, on it, maybe a flywheel setup. I'll see what's available for these, but um, overall, looks pretty good. Got it out. <laughs> so I'll get this thing um, on the inner stand and start tearing things apart and collecting uh, a list of what I need to order for it. So all in a day's work. <laughs> <laughs> all in a couple months work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, episode eight in the books for the most part. Peace to Mike, thank you. Oh man. Well guys, I'm sorry I didn't go all in depth with you every single little piece, but I've kind of covered <laughs> pulling manual swaps, or pulling manuals, installing manuals, etc. so many times on the channel that it's kind of all the same stuff with the 203 chassis. I mean, it's not much to it. The bracket, all the little pieces, you know, lines and all that stuff. Drive shaft, um, it's all pretty self explanatory with how much I've shown on the channel at this point. Uh, but I tried to get you guys as much as I could today. But it's cold in the garage, and the GoPro does not survive in the cold. The battery drains so fast, so it kind of defeats the uh, up close views and, or I guess, wide up close detail views. But got a lot of cleaning up to do. I'm glad that I uh, took some time cleaning up the garage earlier so that we can make it into a mess again. Um, but if I didn't do that earlier, I would feel extra like anxiety right now. I don't like when it gets too, too messy. So uh, got our stack of wheels over there um, and our exhaust that's waiting for the C55, some other stuff. But I'm going to get this organized. We'll get this thing. I don't know if I'll roll this outside because I do want to pressure wash it this time. I'll try to cover up what I can um, and get a game plan for just scrubbing this down. And we'll see. I might, maybe I'll put it in the inner stand before I do that and roll that out. So that's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the engine pull episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed this engine pull episode. I hope you guys are glad Benzin on the Budget is back in full effect. Uh, I'm super excited. It's been forever, it feels like, since we did episode seven. And just in general, since I picked this car up, we, we bought this at like the beginning of September, I want to say, or end of August, uh, right before I went back to school for the year. So, what is it now? February, March? It's been a while. So, good things take time, great things take time. I got a lot of cool parts on the way for what we're trying to build. And uh, hope you guys will continue to follow along. I'll catch you guys on episode nine. Peace. Mm -hmm.